This video is to show you how to do a multiplicative regression model um, that has seasonality in it uh, and exponential growth. So we're going to take a log of the, um, the y to dampen that exponential growth and we're going to create dummy variables for the months here. Um, and I'm going to do similar to um, example 13.7 from the decision analysis and decision making textbook by Albright and Winston, this guy here. The only difference is I'm going to be dealing with monthly data instead of quarterly data. Uh, and for my students, uh, what I'm working through is um, the problem I assigned you from modules eight and nine for practice here. Uh, problem 59, the second part, uh, after we do winters, uh, I ask you to do um, similar to that example in the book I just showed you, where we create the 12 dummy variables, a time variable, and we do a regression uh, with the lawn of the total, which we undo with the exponential function after, um, to again model um, this example here, 13.7 from the Albright textbook. Um, okay, <clears throat> now what we need to do is we first need to create dummies for our months, January, February, March, etc. Uh, I'm going to show you what not to do first, because most of the time this works. Okay, funny enough. Bear with me here. Uh, so normally, if you want to make dummy variables, just go to Stat Pro. So add in Stat Pro Data Utilities, create dummy variables. Okay, for the month underscore year here, let's try this out. So we're going to go highlight all of our data here, our dates. We want to create dummies for them. Click OK. Several dummies. OK. Month underscore year. Yes. Now, get the spinny wheel for a bit because it tried to create dummy variables for every single month. See these funny entries? It just couldn't handle these dates the way they were formatted. Now, one sad thing when we use Stat Pro as opposed to just other functions in, in Excel, there is no undo. What's the best way to undo this mistake? Well, just close um, the Excel file and open it again, providing you haven't done any other work in it that you haven't saved yet. I haven't, I'm just starting from scratch. Um, so I'm just gonna close and reopen. So normally, just creating dummy variables works great. In this case, we're gonna have to do a couple things first. Firstly, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go and copy all that data for the months and repaste it here. Little note, it's always a good idea to keep your original data. If you're going to modify it, just copy it and paste it and do, do your modifications to the copy of your data. Um, now, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go highlight it all and under home, I'm going to change this format to date uh, where I have my month, day, year. Next thing I'm going to do I'm going to go and split this up. I want dummies for each month. So I want every January to have a dummy, every February, every March. Um, so next thing I'm going to do under data is text to columns. And that's going to split the month out from the year and the day. Uh, delimited is OK. Click next. And other is what I want. And I want a dash. So you'll see here it was 1993-01-01. -01. Click next and click finish. Gorgeous. Now, another funny thing that happens, um, these guys show up as 1905. Very strange. Um, that's because this column is still set to date. I'm now going to switch it back to general. And there's my years back again. So I have my year, my month, and my day. It defaulted to the first day of every month. We don't actually need those days. Uh, we can keep them if we want. Now, uh, we're finally ready to create dummies for our months here. Okay. And if you want, you can call them one, two, three months, one, two, three, or you can call them January, February, March. If you want to get fancy with this, you can create an if statement to say if this is January, or if this is a one, then label this guy January. And if not, if it's equal to a two, then label it February. Okay, you can imagine that will take some time though. 
So for now, I'm just going to do one, two, three, four. Um, I can also modify that later if I want. Um, okay, but what I want to create dummies for now are the months, these guys. So now, back to add-ins, back to stat pro, data utilities, create dummy variables. And go highlight those months. Click OK. Click OK. Several dummies is good. Click OK. And on the month, click OK. And there we go. So months 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 through 12. It's made dummies for each of those. Beautiful. Now the day numbers are beside that. Okay, these days, they're all ones. I'm just going to go delete those. Beautiful. Um, I don't need them. They just defaulted to the first of the month each month. Now, next thing I need to do is um, a time variable. Time. So, this data, we're also wanting it to have an upward trend over time. Um, and so what we do is we create this variable called time where it's just one through, in this case, 139. It jumps up by one each time. And we're going to add that into our regression model. That's going to allow for the upward trend. These guys are going to allow for the seasonal effects over the 12 months of the year. This guy's going to allow for the upward trend. Um, again, go read up on this if you're not sure what I'm doing. Um, Great examples, 13.7 of the Decision Analysis and Decision Making Textbook by Albright and Winston uh, that explains this model. Um, okay, now, next thing, we're assuming that the um, these totals are um, experiencing exponential growth. We cannot model exponential growth with a regression model. Um, we can only model linear growth. It's really the linear regression model. Um, so what we're going to do to turn this back into linear growth is to take the natural log of each of the totals, and that will dampen that exponential growth. Beautiful. And this is actually going to be my y variable. And this guy, the time, as well as 11 out of these 12 uh, months will be my x's or my independence. A little note here. When you're doing um, or using dummy variables, you want to exclude one of the dummies out of your total. So if there's 12 months, only use 11 of the dummies um, because you don't need the 12th. Um, you can infer it by the other 11. Um, let's say if you're not in any of these months, if it's zeros across the board, then you must be in month 12. If you're in any of the other months, then you cannot be in month 12, if that makes sense. So I'm going to skip month 12. You could skip any of them. Uh, I'm just going to, in my all my examples, just skip the last dummy out of the set of dummies uh, when I run my regression. So I'm now ready to run my regression. I've got all my x variables plus my log of my y here. So I go to add-ins, stat pro, regression, multiple regression, and I go highlight all of my data. Okay, I can just start with my month numbers here, all the way to the logs of the totals. Click OK. Click OK. And my dependent is going to be the log of the total. And my independents are going to be my first 11 months plus my time. Control click to highlight um, your time uh, and skip the month 12 here, if that makes sense. Okay, and what to be treated as categorical, those first 11 months. You don't have to select that. We could talk more about that too if we wanted. Okay, and so here is my regression output. Beautiful. Now, next thing to actually generate forecast based on this output, what I need to do is go create my forecast and take an expon exponential of those for EXP. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go copy all my coefficients, go back to my data set, beautiful, and this is getting to be really large, but that's okay. On the right here, I'm going to paste special those coefficients. Okay. And if I want to get really fancy here, what I'm going to do, bear with me, 
copy out these months, these coefficients here, and you're going to see why in a minute. Fastest way to do this, I'm going to paste special them across the top here. This will allow me to use a sum product. I'm going to put it on a zero for month 12 because we don't want to use it. And finally, this guy here for the time, I'm going to paste special that guy. Gorgeous. And I'm now going to put in my forecasts as the following equals exp of my constant. Lock that guy. Um, plus the sum product. This is such a handy little call, and that's the reason why I pasted these guys across the top. Sum product of my coefficients. Lock those with my variables. I'm not going to lock this line because I want to go down as I forecast down. Close the bracket for some product, close it for the exp, and go across my data here. Uh, and I'm not going to lock these guys because I want to be able to shift down here as I go. Close the bracket and on the sum product, close the bracket on the uh, EXP, hit enter. And there's my forecast. And then I can just double click to autofill that down. And there are my forecasts. Uh, what I can also get then is my forecasting errors. Okay, so that's the difference between my actual and my forecasted. So going all the way back here to my actual, subtract from that my forecast. Beautiful. And then from there, we can also go and calculate um, error measures, something like the root mean squared error. Um, is the square root of the sum squared of my errors divided by the count of my errors t4 to t142 notice just up here you can see what I'm typing gorgeous so there's my root mean squared error we could also get different other error measures if we'd like uh, but yeah there we go so we have our forecasts um, <clears throat> using dummies for our months. Uh, we have to exclude one of them, so I excluded month 12, which would be December. Um, using uh, a time variable we've created here to log our um, upward trend, and then um, using a log of our total. Uh, if we want to go chart this to see how accurate our forecasts are, um, we could just go and under, uh, let's see, under add-ins, stat pro, time series, and time series graphs. Go and highlight all of our data here. And click OK, click OK. And interesting things to look at are the totals and the forecasts. And perhaps if you want, you could also add the errors on there. I'm just going to leave the totals and the forecasts. The totals were my original Ys, the forecasts were my forecasted Ys. Click OK and plot, plot both variables on the same vertical and have a date as well. Check that off. Beautiful. And the date is the month underscore year. And there we go. There's our forecast, there's our actuals. Not bad. So the totals are the actuals, the forecasts are the red here. Okay.